So one of I think one of the interesting things that that, that I think is true about our field is that we're very interested in in publications and and assessing contribution in that way. So publishing in top tier journals, publishing a lot in top tier journals really I think dominates a lot of the thinking of of certainly PhD students and junior faculty. It's the things you sort of quote unquote need to to get promoted in in uh, academic settings. But I'm I'm wondering uh, your perspective on you know how do we assess contribution in our field you know what are the pros and cons of of using sort of top tier publications as our as sort of our standard metric for assessing contribution that's a difficult issue you know the um, I'll start with an extreme there was a uh, a university I shouldn't name uh, th that went so much to the extreme where they decided that there was a they wanted to put a quantitative measure on, a f uh, on, on the hurdle for getting tenure. And what they did was that they uh, essentially took the impact factor of every journal as a, as a proxy for prestige of the journal. And then they count, and then they multiply that times the number of articles, and then you come out with a with, with a product, and you must get over a, cer a certain bar, and uh, you know, and it, and if you and if you're publishing in a second tier journal, you have to have twice as many or something. And some people would argue that's actually a bad career advice. If you have too many things in the lower tier journals, you uh, right. uh, you know, it, it's not as good. Uh, so I think that's crazy. Uh, that that kind of quantitative procedure, uh, I've uh, disagreed with some of my colleagues over the years about this, and I think that the most the most important element is for people to actually read the work and see if it has an influence and see if it has an impact. And it's surprising that a very large number of things that have a lot of impact are not necessarily. Uh, papers that have come out of the top tier journals. It's often uh, the risk, risky pieces have come from middle or even some lower tier journals and certainly also from, from uh, collections of books, uh, book chapters. Uh, people will argue that you could be much more risk taking in a, you know, in a, in a book chapter. Uh, so, uh, so there have been some analyses of this. Uh, I, a couple of years ago, there was actually an analysis of uh, uh, impact of top uh, medical journals. And obviously, the higher the prestige of the medical journal, the more impact in general there is. Mm -hmm. There's a regression line. But they look at the, the outliers of the ones that were, had the, the extreme impact. And those were not published in the two or three uh, uh, biggest journals, in, you know, like the New England Journal of Medicine or whatever. Uh, uh, those were published in, se in, in second tier journals. And it was because they were more risky and the journals were not willing to take a, uh, take a chance on them. And those have had the, had, had the biggest influence. So.